Hi, I'm Deb Valentine. Welcome to The Next Element. Have you ever been in a bad mood and you've put on your favorite band or your favorite song? Have you noticed how almost immediately your mood starts to uplift? Today we're going to talk about sound therapy and how it can be used as a tool for healing. Uh, I have Diane Gardelisic here from She Talks With Angels and uh, she's going to help us to understand how sound can help us. Welcome Diane. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, so very, very simply, very, very basically, can you tell us a little bit about what sound therapy is? So sound, it, they have found, heals the body scientifically. It puts us in a state of relaxation, uh, working with our brain waves, synchronizing with our brain, relaxing us, putting us in a deep meditative state, as well as the actual sounds, the Hertz frequencies, will synchronize with each of our organs and put us into the tone that the frequency of the sound is at. Okay, so different frequencies will affect us in different ways? Yes, Okay. good and bad. Good and bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so can you tell us, um, tell us what, a little bit about some of the tools that we would use for, for a sound therapy session? Okay, um, there are so many, there are so many. Um, the ones I specifically use are at um, two specific hertz frequencies. I use 432 hertz and 528 hertz and I use crystal singing sound bowls, a pan drum, which is also called a hang drum, um, an ocean drum, and a tuning fork. Oh, okay. Yes. So all kinds of different modalities and then we can, that we can tune into. Yes. <laughs> Sorry I mean, for the pun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are just the ones that I use. Right. Um, when it comes to sound therapy, you can, humming is a type of sound therapy. There's um, amazing books on that as well. Uh, be it guitar, classical music, a didgeridoo, there's so many sound healing tools. It just depends what the Hertz frequency it's tuned at. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about the crystal bowls and how they kind of came into, into the practice? Sure. I mean. Sound bowls themselves have been around for about 5,000 years uh, from the ancient region of, um, excuse my pronunciation, but Mesotopeia. <laughs> <laughs> I say it wrong every time, Not every time I teach this. And it's, it's Western Asia, um, a part of you know Iraq, Kuwait, Turkey, Syria, I believe as well. And they were originally made of copper then turned into bronze. A lot of people do call them Tibetan bowls. That's kind of their name, but that, that's, that's just one region that um, these bowls came from. In the 80s, there was um, a scientist who realized how we, our bodies, would resonate with uh, quartz crystal. So that's kind of when the crystal bowl came into manufacturing to, because they produce a specific sine wave that uh, repeated over and over, really those vibrations are a lot stronger than other tools to heal the body. Okay, and so how does the human body interpret these sound waves? Does that, that question make sense to you? Um, interpret them? I mean, it's, it's doing two things. It, right. It's, uh, as I said, it's working with our brain waves. Right. Uh, it okay. will synchronize the brain wave to then put us in a relaxed state. And any of those relaxed states, it's just like sleeping, the body rejuvenates. You know, even in brain traumas, they will put us into um, a medically induced coma, again, for the body to heal itself. I mean, the body just needs the right tools to self-heal. It's quite incredible. Okay, okay, we're, we're, uh, we're quite an instrument, <laughs> quite a miraculous instrument. We are. <laughs> okay, and can sound therapy help with both physical and emotional ailments? Yes, yes. So even the vibration um, will, it's so fascinating, it triggers traumas out, it vibrates trapped traumas in the body. So some people can get very, very emotional um, some people can burst out laughing, some people will cry uh, feel, feeling the vibration or hearing it. I mean, I always tell clients to be more like a sponge, mm -hmm. absorb like a sponge versus listening to it because that will happen automatic. 
that all happens automatic. Even if um, we're hearing impaired, we're still going to get the benefits of sound healing because of the, the vibrations. Okay, so it's the vibration that, that we respond to then. Correct. Right, yes. okay. I mean, sound is vibration. Right, yes, yeah, yes it is. Yes, be it it's our, our voice, be it an instrument, it's vibration, yeah. Okay, so you, you told us a little bit about how some people react uh, in a sound therapy session. What does a typical session look like? Like if, you were to, if I were to come in to your, to your place of business and have a, a, a sound therapy session, what would that look like? Well, I usually do groups, even though I have done individual, but you might, I don't know how everybody does it. I'll tell you how I do it, yes. Perfect. <laughs> so you would be lying down on some blankets and mats and all comfortable. I come around and I put some beautiful lavender eye pillows on you just so, you're, especially around other people, you feel very relaxed. And um, hot stones, I usually put it on some energy centers, again in our palms, just to kind of make us feel grounded, relaxed, something also to hang on to. And you know, this is another kind of touch therapy. Uh, lots of things going on. Sometimes we, uh, we also put crystals on you if I'm doing it with um, another co-host. And I start really slowly um, just doing some gongs on the, the bowls and go into the sound healing of ringing all the sound bowls. Usually at the end of that, um, going into a tuning fork. If I didn't begin with it, it's always different for me. I, I just kind of intuitively, what do I do first? Sometimes I'll start with the pan drum and make it more shamanic into a beat. And mm -hmm. the pan drum's beautiful because they're all good notes. Unlike the bad notes and good notes on a piano. So, and, and then end with an ocean drum, which is more like a rattle. So if anything has come up that's kind of stagnant energy around us, the ocean drum or a rattle, which I, I don't use, really breaks up that energy for before you leave. So, okay. And as, will somebody suffer any types of side effects from a session, like after the fact? Um, sometimes emotionally, yeah. I would say up to two to three weeks, people could have forgotten. Um, well, I always call them traumas, even though that sounds really dramatic, but forgotten memories or things that we haven't dealt with emotionally, they'll be coming to the surface either while we're awake or while we dream. And sound healing is to bring those forward. We can't heal those traumas in the body, um, emotionally, physically, unless they're brought to the surface to dealt with. Okay, and um, is there a possibility of, of, of somebody finding the session um, upsetting or irritating, like almost irritating. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, yes. I mean, it's so interesting because you'll have people lying there, they fall asleep. They're right out in their relaxed state. You'll have other people who are seeing colors and this is how they describe you. I'm seeing colors and I was floating and I was happy. And then other people, you know, I've had people roll over and hold their ears and it might not be all of the bowls. It could be one bowl specifically. It could be uh, the heart bowl or the throat bowl usually seem to, what are geared towards that, usually seem to affect people the most, especially we hold so much pain in our heart or for people that aren't comfortable, you know, speaking up. I'll play that throat bowl. They'll start coughing. They'll start having tears roll down their eyes and it's just breaking up any stagnant energy in there, the frequency, the vibration to allow to it to open. So okay. all sorts of responses. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, so I, you were talking about playing the throat bowl or the heart bowl. So you're, you have, is it seven bowls for the, for the seven chakras? Yes, for the seven main chakras. We have chakras all throughout the body. And, yeah, no, yes. I understand, but for yeah. the seven main ones. For the seven main ones, okay. that's how I do it, yes. Okay, and, and tell me, Diane, how did you become interested in sound therapy? Oh, well, that would be a whole different show, but. <laughs> I will, uh, briefly, <laughs> briefly. Um, in 2018, my hound dog was uh, very sick. He was diagnosed with nose and throat tumor cancer and was given about three to four months to live. So um, 
as an intuitive, I started channeling, okay, what do I do? What are the, you know, do I let them go or do I, you know? So I started getting all these answers and one of them was sound therapy. And I was like, well, what, what the heck is that, right? So I actually bought my first two bowls uh, for the heart and the solar plexus, which is our joy center, mm -hmm. for him. He's a hound dog, cried all the time, just like the song. <laughs> and um, so I thought I'm going to help move that, that trauma out. And it was incredible what it did. And it irritated me in the beginning until it starts shifting out my own stuff as well. But um, I mean, that was just one of the many tools I used with him. But he did live until uh, last year in his 16th year. Wow, Cancer that's incredible. Free. That's yes. incredible. Yes. OK. OK, perfect. Um, so we talked about, and this might be a repeat question, so if it is, we'll, we'll kind of go through it. But we talked about what a typical session looks like. We also talked about sort of the um, um, responses that some of your uh, some of the clients would have during yeah. a, a specific session. Um, so I guess, how does, so my question is, how does sound therapy feel? I don't know what we've already kind of discussed. Well, physically, so yeah, physically, yeah, physically, I think, yeah. we talked more emotionally, right? right. Um, physically, you can get really, really hot, really, really cold, or both throughout the session. Again, it's vibrating throughout the body. Um, mostly, those are the two things I, I hear, kind mm -hmm. of the kind of the same response as when people get Reiki, you can feel really, really relaxed in the body. You can feel certain times a little bit tense, um, as well as hot and cold. Sometimes chills or vibrations mm -hmm. themselves. Some people are very sensitive to it, sensitive to it and really feel it. Um, where they were like, "Were you playing something? You know, in this region because it felt like it was right." Yes, you know. Okay, so so different different people will have obviously different reactions yeah. to, so it, you could be playing the the throat chakra bowl, and um, you know, I could have a completely different reaction than the person next to me. It yes. could be positive or negative, or it just depends on on what's kind of cu coming up for each one of us. Is that right? Right. Right. Okay. Even though the negative is positive, it, you know, uh, you no, know, it yes, has to come to the surface, it does, right? It, it can feel negative um, during that time. I've had people, I, we had one person when I when I did it with a co-host and she was giving everyone Reiki while I was doing the sound mm -hmm. healing and uh, the, our client was on her side holding her ears and she said afterwards she wanted to leave. So I knew that a lot of stuff was going to physically and emotionally be coming up. And months later, it probably was only four months, she came to another one of our session. And she just lied there like this. And she loved it. So it's, it's interesting how you can have such a negative feeling mm -hmm. to then go, OK, it did something. I'm going to come back and try this again and love it. So different, diff even a different time will, yeah. will produce different results. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And, um, so obviously, you kind of answered my question. You have people that actually come back to do yeah. second sessions and third <laughs> sessions. Yeah. I mean, I like to tell people not to rush it. You don't need to come back in a week. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to come back at all. But mm -hmm. if you feel that you want more, then you know, wait a little bit. See how this plays out. Do some meditation on any of the emotions that have come up or um, physical ailments that have come up. You know, mm -hmm. I have uh, another client because I also use the the tuning for it. Okay, so Diane, we're just gonna we're just gonna stop you right there. Um, stay tuned because after the break, Diane is gonna give us a demonstration on crystal wolf therapy. Don't go anywhere. to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hey folks, it's me, Giovanni Petiti, the host of the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. It's the hilarious quiz show where you, the viewers, play for valuable non-existent prizes. 
It's got great trivia, fun facts, and a lot of laughs, all blended together in a perfect cocktail of edutainment. So join us Wednesdays at 7.30 right here on Rogers TV. Nice. The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. Welcome back to The Next Element. I'm Deb Valentine, and here we have Diane who's going to talk to us all about and give us a little demonstration on sound therapy with Crystal Bowles. Hi, Diane. Welcome back. Hi, Debbie. Thank you. So, Diane, tell me, tell me a little bit about the bowls. So, you've got, we've got seven chakra bowls. Can you just kind of play each one and, and give us a little bit of an um, idea of what the different chakras sound like? Sure, sure. So, these bowls, so you know, they are at 432 hertz, so they are one of the most healing hertz frequencies. Each bowl is chakra tuned, even though they are at 432 hertz, and they are perfect pitch as long as you hit the pitch. <laughs> okay. Yes. So the largest one I have is the root bowl. And they'll keep going. That's okay. the sine wave. It just keeps going. Okay. 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 Then we have, so moving up, we have the sacral bowl. Tell us a little bit about the sacral chakra then. What 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 is that affecting? Like what is that? Well, <laughs> well, it's it's actually um, a lot to do with what real they say is uh, trauma in that okay. area. Okay. So it could be just putting it back into into balance. Um, a lot of time, women who have you know given birth. Um, it feels, it actually feels out as a trauma within the body or okay. sexual trauma or, you know, um, even having childhood insecurity can play out okay. in, um, in actually all three of our lower physical chakras, but yes. It's interesting because that one, that one, that one affected me. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a deep dive on that. <laughs> That's a whole other show. That's a whole other show. <laughs> So this is our solar plexus, also considered our joy center. are made of quartz and sand and they are he baked heated you know cooked at uh, over 5,000 degrees usually so and then spun so this is our heart bowl so again this is where we you know we either have an overactive heart chakra or underactive heart chakra do do we cry at every commercial very very emotional all the time or are we like nothing affects us I'm fine, underactive heart chakra. So again, it's just balancing us. That's mm -hmm. what these are to do and putting us into a nice alignment too. Oh, okay. On top of all the, the healing properties it does physically and emotionally. That's interesting because this one, I, I feel like it's going in and out, like fading in and out. Mm -hmm. um, these ones were a little more steady, steady so yes. to speak. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, and then we have the 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 last three chakras: the um, throat, the throat, yeah. the the crown, and the third eye. Crown and third eye. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So can you give us sort of like a little demonstration on just just a really short yeah. one on what you would do in a session with all the bowls at once? 
Yes. Okay. Sure. Perfect. Sure. So I'll just do it. Then. Yep. Is there, is there a method, like is there a, for lack of a better term, a specific way that you play them or is it just what you're intuitively um, open to? Yes, both. both. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I think different sound healers do it different ways. Okay. For me, I like to have very positive notes that go together. So I find that a lot of notes that are side by side do not resonate nice for hearing. They're going to still do the same you know, healing in the body vibrationally, mm -hmm. but the sound can be a lot more irritating. So I find like the root will go with any bowl, mm -hmm. the crown pretty much goes with any bowl, but then the other ones I do, I'll skip. And that's just the actual sound of them, yeah. So I mean something like these two bowls sound so pretty together, mm -hmm. where side by side, Okay. Oh, sorry, I actually hit that wrong. They're, they don't resonate as nicely sound-wise, right. but okay. they still vibrationally do what they're supposed to do. Okay, so you yes. said these bowls are tuned to 432 hertz, which yes. is the most, a positivity hertz for... Yes, yes. I mean, they've, they've done a lot of scientific research on um, what that does in the body. Uh, that and 528 both, yes. Okay. So is there a specific hertz or a specific tone that we should be um, worry, wary of? Like if I go to, let's say I, I go to a different sound therapist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, or I buy myself a set of bowls and I mm -hmm. start banging away at them, how does, right. yeah. Um, well, the four four, it's a, it's a very interesting history we wouldn't be able to get into, but I find that 440 doesn't have the the scientific proof behind it that it does any healing, which is so interesting because mm -hmm. as of the 50s, we started tuning our instrument against 440 hertz. Oh, okay. So not too sure why, couldn't find the history in that of why they decided to change that. That's why the piano played in Toronto sounds the same as one overseas, but mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I like to stick to the ones that have some scientific proof on what it does to the body and there's so much research out there on it. So if somebody comes to you with a physical ailment versus um, an emotional mm. trauma, mm -hmm. would that change the way that you, I mean I know you normally do it in groups, but if, if we were to have mm -hmm. like a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. session, would that change the way that you play the bowls? <laughs> well, I mean, because I do metaphysically he metaphysical healing as well, um, that's the belief that anything that is going on here plays out here. Okay. So we're, we would always treat the emotional mm -hmm. first. Okay. So yeah, I don't know if that answered that, but yeah, that's, yeah, okay. that's no, yeah, how it, it would it be done. Um, okay. And can anyone learn to play the sound bowls? Oh, absolutely. Could you teach me? Absol absolutely. Absolutely. So when I teach, I like to do it as a more meditative state so that you're actually kind of connecting to it in more meditation versus I'm here to play a bowl. Well, okay. let's use the sacral since that one affected you so <laughs> lovely, so lovely. Okay. So there are mallets and strikers. Um, I personally like the sound of a mallet dinging a bowl versus a striker. It's a little tinnier, but the thing is, you'll never scrape with a striker. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. You're but right. you're still gonna learn with a mallet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, let me move some of these aside. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. 
There's two ways to do it where you would gong and play, okay. but we're going to do it in a more connection way. Okay. Okay. So all I'm going to ask you to do, you would hit it around this high up, mm -hmm. not hit it, but you would start to play it. I'll do it very quickly. You would start fast. There's a certain amount of pressure. Oh, okay. And when you're connected to the bowl, it will start. Then you're going to hit the perfect pitch and then you slow down. So now you slow down to hit the perfect pitch. Think of it as meditation. If you're more audio than visual, you can close your eyes and connect that way too. That's really something cool to do. I encourage everybody to try sound bowls. <laughs> And it's funny because I've tried playing, and I mean, I know we've talked about the the Tibetan the Tibetan bowls before, yes. and I can never make them sing. Mm -hmm. And why? Like, why is that? It's an energy. I actually had a um, a metal bowl for many years, about mm -hmm. three years before I even played bowls, and it's our energy has to synchronize synchronize with the energy of the bowl before it will even play for us. That's why with the crystal bowls, it's actually much, much easier. Okay. Much, much easier than the um, the, the copper or the bronze bowls. Okay, yeah. okay. And if somebody is interested in learning how to play sand bowls, where, sh where would they go? Uh, well, I teach it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I teach it all the time, but... Um, there's lots of places, you know, if you searched, you know, wanting to learn sound bowls, be it it's more for just your self-healing. Um, there is accreditation, which I don't do, uh, out there as well for sound healers. So, oh, okay. So just uh, if you're interested, please look it up <laughs> <laughs> or get in touch with Diane at She Talks with Angels. <laughs> okay. Um, so Diane, this is this is fascinating. Um, you know, I, we're gonna have to have you back to dive in a little bit deeper. <laughs> That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And uh, so we, we have about a minute left, and uh, we're, I just want to um, talk about, um, even though this was sort of a mini demonstration, this, is, this was an amazing experience, and, uh, um, you know, the, the, the different sounds of the different bowls uh, will affect you. Um, uh, Diane has mentioned that you can actually look this up on um, YouTube and uh, try it out for yourself. Try out what the vibrational sound's going to do for you because uh, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, so um, we're just going to wrap up. Diana, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure. I, I love this. Um, you know, we, uh, as I said, we're going to have you back and we're going to, we're going to dig a little deeper into, uh, into the whole sound bowl therapy and sound therapy. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, Diane. And I want to thank you too for tuning into the next element. Until next time, love and light. Bye-bye.